Hello there, folks. It's Joe Wazoo here. Hey, I just want to show off today uh, something I think is really cool about the new Flex Edge products and uh, having a Wi Fi sled uh, in there giving you access to things that are on the other Ethernet ports. So if you look at this drawing I have here, this is basically what's happening here in my office desk right now. I have on my DA70, which I will show you the Crimson uh, 3.2 config here shortly, but my Ethernet 1 port right here, this green cable, that's connected to a uh, NT24X red line switch here, which then is connected to seven HMIs here that I use for my classes. And then I have a connection out of there going to my office, uh, to the router here at the office that gets out to the internet. So those connections are all set up as DHCP clients, meaning that they're getting an IP address on my network here of 192.168.254. Whatever, if you look here, these are all on that subnet, including this. So that's the Ethernet 1 port. Ethernet 2, on the other hand, this is really unique. I have Ethernet 2 set up as a fixed IP address, which is what the uh, configuration starts out as, is a 192.168.222.222. However, I have my Ethernet 2 port set up as a DHCP server. This is a first time for me to be able to do this with Redline products. I've got this guy set up as a DHCP server, which is connected to this Ethernet switch here, which is connected to three additional devices. I've got two other HMIs over here set up as DHCP clients, and you can see that they are getting the IP address of 192.168.222. Dot something. They're on that subnet. And then I even have a, another cable out of here going to my laptop on my wired IP address. Okay, so that's on my wired. And then for my third Ethernet connectivity, in this particular SLED location here, I've got a Wi-Fi card configured as a DHCP server on the subnet of 192.168.1.10. And that is Wi-Fi connected here to my laptop. This is called my DA70 SLED is the part number of this SSID. So that's what's all laid out here on my table. And if I go into the Crimson program, I'll just go over to Crimson 3.2, and I'll just show you, I go over here to the left. If I click on Ethernet 1, I want you guys to notice that I have it configured up, uh, configured as a DHCP client here. It means it's gonna get a, a IP address from my router here. The other thing I have that's done differently here is I've got this status set up as trusted. So this contradicted what I thought the mode should have been, but this is a trusted status. So I've got that set up as trusted. And then I've also got internet sharing enabled to connect to the internet, because in essence, this guy is connected to the internet here at my office. The other tabs, nothing there. DHCP server, I'm not using that because here I'm getting IP address, so I can't use that. And the rest of these are all set to their factory defaults. Nothing there. Okay. So if I click on Ethernet 2 over here, I want you to notice on Ethernet 2, it's set up as a manual configuration with this particular IP address, 192.168.222.222. And again, notice here I've got trust uh, status set to trusted. However, I'm not doing the internet sharing here because that port is not actually connected to the internet. Ethernet 1 is, so I don't know how that worked. Maybe it could be, but anyway, I got it turned off here. If I go to the monitoring tab, nothing there. How about the DHCP server? Well, I want you to notice, since I've got that enabled on the status, I've got the range set up here to be 192.168.222.100 all the way up to 200. And I've got the published gateway enabled as well. Okay. Nothing else on the rest of these tabs. They're all factory settings. Nothing big there. Nothing. Yep, same set. And then if I go to the Wi-Fi card, let me look here. I'll show you in the Wi-Fi card. Now I've got it set up for manual configuration, and I put it on a static IP address of 192.168.101.10. And once again, I've got it set up down here as trusted. I got the internet sharing to enabled, I guess. Now that I look at that, I probably could have done the same thing on Ethernet 2. I don't think it'll affect anything, but uh, I got that set up to enable. 
Most importantly here, team, I got this set up as an access point with my SSID known as Wazoo's DA70, and I got a password down here. If I go through the rest of these tabs, this is standard setting, not doing anything in monitoring. I do have the DHCP server enabled because when I log into that, I want that thing to give me an IP address, Wi-Fi. So that's also set up here as well. Notice the subnet is 101.100. And if I go here, nothing big here. Everything else looks fine, looks good. So uh, if I were to show you here a couple things, if I go down here, I want you guys to notice that currently, uh, if I look at my Wi-Fi settings here, matter of fact, uh, you can see right here that I'm connected to my DA70. That's how I'm connected to it there. But I am also, if I go back to the drawing, I have a wired connection here as well. So if I go to the old DOS prompt team, and let's say, for instance, I go to IP config, you can see something interesting here. You can see that on my wired connection right here, that's the IP address that I got on the wired connection. And down here, there's the IP address that I got on my wireless. Notice the difference. One of them is on the .222 subnet, and this one's on the .101 subnet here. So quite interesting there. What I found fascinating was uh, if I wanted to ping a device over here or on this network from the Wi-Fi, I can simply go over here and, and I can type in some ping number like this. And you can see that I can see something on the 222, even though, now yes, correct, I am connected here. So, hey, wait, if I disconnect, I'm going to disconnect that Ethernet cable. I just disconnected it. You can't really see it, but you have to trust me. If I disconnect it, look, I lost that connection. However, if I go ping, I still get access to that network. And, wait a minute, don't say sold yet. What about this stuff over here? What if I want to ping one of these guys? So let's see here. I go to the DOS and I go up. And I'm going to type 254. Dot, what I got over here? 17, 14, well, it doesn't matter, but let's see what we got here. So I change this to a 14. Of course, I picked one that doesn't work. That, whoops. Let me look here. How about one of these other guys? Go on here. Should do an X here. Mm -hmm. 254. Dot, what was another number we had there? 17? Well, anyway, let me, uh, I'll come right back to that because I think I'm guessing at the wrong IP addresses. Was there 17? Right? right there, that guy should be. Okay, well, let's do this. So if I open up the web browser for the unit right here, 192.168.222.22, if I hit remote view, I can see all of my IP addresses. So I wonder, could I ping this guy? Well, let's try. Dot .20, let me try this. Oh, that's a 254. My fault. Well, interesting. It should ping itself. 192.168. Huh. Oh, well. Well, I'll continue with the what I think is interesting. I can't seem to see that. However, if I open another tab here, let's try here, 192.168.254.20. That's interesting. 192, okay, why can I, hold on. Let me look at 192.168.224.20. Interesting, I can't ping it, <laughs> but I can see the IP address for the unit. That's very interesting. So that's on that one. And what about this 101 here? So this one is on the wired port. Even though I'm not plugged in, I won't plug in right here. Let me plug this back in. doesn't really matter. But I'll plug the wired port back in. So if I go back to this guy, you'll see that now my wired connection right here has an IP address. And, of course, that's what this is connected to. This is the other port. And if I put the same number in here, That's on the Wi-Fi. That's that port. And you can see that I can see all of those units, which is pretty darn cool. So in essence, I mean, I think this is really fascinating. I can connect through here and get to these other subnets. Now, a couple of their tests I did earlier uh, that 
I thought was pretty cool because quite honestly, this is how I'm connected to the internet right now. It's through the DA70, which is then connected to my, uh, the Redline NT24, which is then connected to the switch or router here at my office. So watch this. I'm going to go open up a test of internet speed. Now I'm connected right now. Let's see what happens. If I do a run test here, this is connected. I have both the Wi-Fi and the uh, Ethernet 2 port wired connection. So this is showing that bandwidth. Now I don't know really whether this is going over the wired or the wireless at this time. I'm just showing you here for thr throughput. We'll see how this pans out. Pretty darn impressive. Now I'm going to physically disconnect. I just physically disconnected my wired port. So I've gotten rid of the wired connection in here. And now I'm strictly Wi-Fi into this. So with the Wi-Fi, let's do the same test again. And I want you to take a minute to look at that. That's pretty impressive right there. Going through the DA70, through an NT24, up to my router to get out. That's pretty darn good speeds over the Wi-Fi connection, if you ask me. So pretty, I think that's pretty nice. Anyway. That was just a quick video that I wanted to show off of a really a interesting application of using the Wi-Fi sled to get access to other Ethernet ports. I think what I'd like to do for a further test is add a couple dual Ethernet sleds in here and see if I can get access to them as well. I think that would be fascinating. But if you want this presentation, uh, I've actually got this uh, set up, all the pictures here, uh, my settings and so forth, and the settings in Crimson, and I'll be more than willing to send you this PDF copy so that you can have that for your documentation uh, for configuration. Anyway, uh, hey, thanks a lot, folks. Have a great day. See you later.